Melang, uh, my name is Dr. Chabalala. I'll be taking you today for the vertical projectile motion. Uh, welcome to the Institute of Applied Science and Commerce. Uh, it is very, very important to note that we'll be doing motion in one dimension. I've said that it's the vertical projectile motion, meaning we're going to look at the motion in one dimension, vertically only. Uh, now, today we're going to look at the definition of the vertical projectile motion, meaning we're going to discover what is a uh, vertical projectile. A vertical projectile, we're going to look at the force of gravity, define it and use an equation for it, and we're going to define it using Newton 2. And I think in grade 11 I've already dealt with that uh, Newton 2 and definition of uh, force of gravity. We're going to look at the acceleration due to gravity, uh, and we're going to treat acceleration as a vector quantity. And yesterday I said to you that the vector quantity is a quantity with both magnitude and direction. So from this lesson, when we are talking about acceleration, really, we must really be able to state its magnitude and talk about its direction as well. And very importantly, we are going to be representing motions in a graphical form. Uh, we're going to do three kinds of graph, displacement versus time, Another term for that is called uh, position versus time graph. Second, we're going to do velocity versus time graph. Third, we're going to deal with acceleration versus time graph. Now, after that, we're going to deal with equations of motions. But these equations of motions are going to be different to what we did when we dealt with the equations of motions in general. Because when we did equations of motions in general, we dealt with motions in horizontal plane and vertical plane. But because we are dealing with vertical projectile motion and we are dealing with motion in one dimension, we are going to specifically look at vertical equations of motions and we are going to deal with some problems. Now let's start. What is a vertical projectile? What is a vertical projectile? A projectile is an object that can be thrown up with an initial velocity. An object that can be thrown up with an initial velocity. So that the only force that is acting on this object is the force of gravity only. So we, we ignore any other forces, particularly air resistance. You know, when I throw something up, there's what we call air resistance. So a projectile is any object that can be thrown up with an initial velocity. And the only force that can act on this projectile is what we call the force of gravity. An example of projectile is this stick that I'm giving right now. It's a projectile because I can throw it up with an initial velocity. Uh, if I eliminate air resistance and then I'm in a vacuum, this will be a projectile. Now, vertical projectile motion will consider me throwing an object vertically upward. So we are looking at the vertical motion of this object only. So we are going to study the motion of this object. And the motion, the study of this mo motion of this object is called the vertical projectile motion. Do you guys understand? Yes. Are there any other questions? Now, let's look at the force of gravity. Force of gravity, we know. We know force of gravity is the force that pulls everything towards the center of the earth. So it's stronger to objects which are moving closer uh, to the surface of the earth. So force of gravity is the force, it's the pulling force. Remember in grade 7, uh, we define force as a push or a pull. So anything that pushes you, anything that pulls you is a force. But force of gravity is the pulling force because it, pull, it pulls everything towards the center of the earth. So that's the force of gravity, the force that pulls any other object or any other matter towards the center of mass. But now in grade 11, we denoted force of gravity as G, M1, M2, L squared. Still remember we said force of gravity is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between those two objects. Right? Now, precisely we are saying F is directly proportional to the product of the masses, mass 1, mass 2. F again is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. What do I mean? If I increase the mass of an object, if I increase the mass of an object, the force of gravity acting on that object will be more. I'll make a typical example. The force of gravity that is acting on a, on a feather, 
on a feather, inducing a feather, uh, it's lesser than the force of gravity that is acting on you as a human being. Why? The mass of a feather is lighter than the mass of a human being. So that is why a feather takes time. If I can uh, leave a feather, it will take time to flow to the towards the, the curve because the force of gravity that is acting there is lesser. Why is it lesser? Because of mass. Do you guys understand? Now, but when you look at a human being, if someone throws me down, uh, I'll instantly I'll be on the ground because of my mass. Meaning the force of gravity that is acting on me is bigger than the force of gravity that is acting on the feather. Now we have that. Now, suppose I said the force of gravity, I'm quantifying it now, and I'm defining it from first principle. Force of gravity is what? Force of gravity, I said, is the force that pulls anything towards the center of the earth. Meaning we're going to model the unit, the earth, the earth as an object, the earth as an object, and we're going to model any other mass that interacts with the earth as another object as well. So we're having two objects interacting. Object number one is the earth, Object number two is any other mass. Example, human being, feather, a camera, and so forth. I'll make it, I'll, let, let me make it a kind of example. Suppose in this way, I'm, I'm having F. F is equals to G. I'm going to denote the mass of the Earth with a bigger M. The mass of the, the, mass of the Earth will be denoted by the bigger M. So I have bigger M here. The mass of any other object that is interacting with the F will be smaller m. I'm going to have m here, and this I'm going to have r squared. Right? For Newton 2, you still remember for Newton 2, we have what you call F is equal to ma. For Newton 2. This is force, this is force. So I'm going to represent this in a form of Newton 2. Right? Now it is clear from the above that the acceleration due to gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, normally you denote acceleration due to gravity as g. The acceleration due to gravity, if we want to write it equivalently to Newton 2, it will be denoted by g m over r squared. Hmm? We have that. This is acceleration due to gravity. Can I have this? So that at the end, when I represent the force of gravity, I'm having this mass. Right? But instead of writing this whole thing, instead of writing this whole thing, I'm going to write this. I'm going to write that. Do you guys understand? So I have small m and g. Is it for the first time you've seen this? So this is another way of writing force of gravity. Do you guys understand? Yes. Now, let's move. The magnitude of this, it's easy. It's easy to, to calculate the magnitude of this. We know the mass of the Earth, we know gravitational constant, and we know the distance uh, of the radius of the Earth. So, scientists substituted each and every value there, and the value that they found, it was approximately, the value that they found for G was approximately 9,8 meters per second squared. Do you understand where 9,8 meters per second squared comes from? So that is force of gravity. So every time, this is a constant. Now every time when you are dealing with the force of gravity, G will be denoted by that. And you understand why G is 9,8 meters per second squared. This is how they got it. This we can get it as a constant. This we know the mass of the Earth. This we know the radius of the Earth. So we can't, you, you, you uh, place everything there, then we got G as approximately 9,8 meters per second squared. So I didn't want to tell you that G is 9,8. I wanted you to understand and actually picture it where does this 9,8 meters per second squared comes from. Now let's move forward. Let's deal with gravitation due to gravity. And I think I've touched on that already. I think I've touched on that already. I prove that gravitation due to gravity it's approximately 9,8 meters per second. And it's a constant, it's constant. Because why? Uh, according to Newton 2, F is equal to MA, right? right. Now we are saying for any, any, any object that's closer to the surface of the Earth, example of those objects, human beings, 
example of those beds and so forth. So the gravity, the gravitational the acceleration that is acting on them due to gravity, the acceleration due to gravity that is acting on, on them is denoted by G and is constant. We are saying that. So it's a, a, a acceleration due to gravity. It's always constant. And because, remember, Newton too says when a force is applied on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the force. When the force is applied on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the force. We said gravity is the pulling force, meaning anything that is affected by gravity will go down, will go down, because the, the earth will seek to pull that object downward. So when we look at uh, gravitational acceleration, it will always be acting downward and its magnitude will be 9,8. I think you understand it. Its direction is what? Downwards, always. Now, we are going to treat this accelerational constant as a vector. If they ask you what is a, acceler a gravitational acceleration, con acceleration constant, they are going to state its magnitude. What is its magnitude? 9,8 meters per second squared. And what is its direction? Its direction is downward. So we are treating acceleration as a vector and we are doing quite good at that because we know its magnitude and we know its direction and that is why it's constant. Any other questions guys? Yes. Now let's talk about the uh, representing motion in a graphical way. Graphical way. Now as scientists we always want to communicate our data and we want to make what we, the research and analysis that we found out easier for people to understand. Now, and we do this using three types of graphs. Graph number one. Graph number one will be displacement versus time. Graph number two will be velocity versus time. Graph number three will be acceleration versus time. Now another, another, another way to for displacement versus time graph, another textbooks or uh, some teachers will say position versus time graph. Now what is important, you need to know here, the time it took for a projectile to go down is equal to the time that a projectile it takes to come down. I'll make a typical example. It's very important that you understand that before we even go. I'm going to make three important points. The time for a projectile it took to go up is equal to the time it will take a projectile to go down. I'll make a typical example. Suppose I project this pen up, the time it took for this projectile to reach this point, it is going to be equal to the time for this projectile to come down. So if it took this projectile two seconds to reach this point, it will be another two seconds to reach my point of projection again. So the total time of motion will be four seconds. You need to take that down. Secondly, secondly, another point that I'm going to make which is very important is that velocity at the maximum point the velocity at the maximum point is equal to zero. Velocity at 